Hey everyone, it's George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am pumped to have uh, someone I, I really look up to, someone I appreciate, I've been following their journey. Her name is Christina Pedraza. She's actually a principal, and I know she's had a lot of other roles. I think it's uh, Christina's first or second year as a principal, and uh, been really watching her career because she shares a lot in her blog. It's awesome. Uh, I'll make sure I link that in the description. But Christina is a principal, and I wanted to just kind of connect with her, see how things are going at her school. Uh, she's in the Chicagoland area, and I want to see what her and her teachers are doing to kind of support kids with everything that's going on. So, Christina, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, George. I really appreciate being invited. Hey, so, Christina, just can you tell everyone a little bit about kind of who you are, a little bit about your career, and maybe and what you're doing right now? Sure. So um, I have been in education for about 20 years. Um, I started out teaching elementary. I taught reading. Um, then I was a first, fourth, and fifth grade teacher. And then I was an instructional coach for about five years. And for the past three years, I have been an administrator. You've been three, uh, three years as a principal? No, no. This is um, actually my first year as a principal. Last year, I did an interim principalship for part of the year, but um, I was an assistant principal prior to this. So, okay, actually your, your blog is called Confessions of an Instructional Coach Still, yeah, correct? So is, how yeah. do you actually see the intersection of your role as an administrator and your role as an instructional coach? And is there like overlap in that work that you're doing right now? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I, I couldn't have become an administrator, the administrator that I am without the coaching background. I think they complement each other really well. Um, in coaching, you learn about looking for the strengths in people um, and you use questioning to get people to come up with their own answers basically um, and so you don't actually have to be the authority on, on everything and you focus heavily on collaborating with people so kind of taking that experience and then bringing it into being an administrator um, i kind of approach administration with the same lens um, which is fantastic and then i'm able to work with my instructional coach and we kind of work together the same way it, it's like, I, like the reason I'm actually kind of want to dig into this a little bit is one of the things that I hear from people that I actually think would be amazing administrators is their concern that they're going to actually kind of not focus on teaching anymore. I'm like, actually, it's the opposite. Really, you're trying to help other teachers. Now, you don't have the same everyday experience as teachers, obviously, but you also have different views because you're seeing it from a, a different angle of teaching like it's it's when you see teachers every single day you know teaching it, it can improve your practice as a teacher where let's be honest teachers don't have that same opportunity to watch other teachers teach and so you know as as a principal as an administrator you know how much how much of the work that you're doing right now is really focused on learning and how much is focused on like administrative stuff like the, the, I think a lot of people think the learning just is kind of doesn't have anything to do with it where I'm like no actually principals need to be leading that quite a bit yeah I, I I have to say I had that same fear I um I would call myself a reluctant administrator for that reason um but I was lucky to have some good mentors in my life who saw something in me um but I actually I, told you you should become a principal a long time ago too, I, you would be one of those people yeah. and I honestly probably wouldn't be a principal today if, if um I hadn't had your encouragement so stop I it and I genuinely mean it um but I was joking but now uh, Okay. Well, okay. I appreciate that. I'll take, I'll take the comment. I'm giving you a shout out. Anyway, <laughs> um, beyond that though, I think that there's really two critical roles with principal, right? It's building those relationships and getting to know what's going on in your school and really knowing that instruction piece. So um, it's a big part of my role. If I'm not in classrooms on a regular basis, I feel like there's something missing and I'm not doing my job. And when I say I'm in classrooms on a regular basis, I'm like not in there like judging and creeping on people. Um, I get into their classroom every time I leave, I send an email afterwards just saying, hey, here's the great things that I noticed. If people want some feedback and they want some suggestions, you know, we'll have a conversation, but I'm not going in to, to do that with that purpose. Um, I try to tweet stuff out. I put stuff out on our social media, our Instagram, um, and that piece of it. But um, I don't know, I'm constantly reading, working with our coach, um, and really learning from the teachers that are in my building. So, okay, I'm actually gonna dig into something a little bit here. Yeah. And uh, just kind of listening to you, would you say that in your role as an instructional coach, because I'm probably, I'm sure that you actually do instructional coaching as a principal, correct? Yes, for sure, 100%. 
So would you say that people, teachers that you work with are more open to the coaching when you are a principal than you, than you were when there is an instructional coach. Like the reason I bring this up is because when I, I remember when I was a principal and I was doing a lot of the same things I was doing as like a tech coordinator for a school, it was a lot of like, okay, whatever, George, like this is optional. But then when I do as a principal, the exact same thing approaching from the same way, the role would change, right? Like people are saying, well, he's, he is kind of the, the boss. <laughs> like really, like I, I know, like, at the end of the day, we always want voice in our, in our work and, you know, but I, I am a person that I want to make sure my boss is happy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Would you see, like, would you see any of that too? And there's a reason I'm asking this, right? Like, would you see that people are more willing to try new things coming from the viewpoint of, from the principal, as opposed to an instructional coach? Honestly, in, I know what you're talking about and I have definitely seen that in other places in the building that I'm currently principal at, the coach has been there for five years. Right. So anytime Pia says something, people just listen to her because she's built such great relationships and she's really seen as that knowledge base. Um, I have worked in other places um, and, and have seen, you know, seen what you're talking about where it's like um, they really want to please more of the administrator and they work with the coach for whatever reasons, but um, the administrator kind of gets a little bit more done. But, um, and when I was an instructional coach, I wasn't, I wasn't really privy to necessarily what my principal was doing. Um, I worked with my teachers a lot. I met with my principal about once a week. We didn't really necessarily talk about things that she wanted to see with particular teachers themselves. So I'm not sure what the influence was there. Yeah, I, th I think the reason I'm talking about this too is like one, one obviously the idea of, you know, you're like, this is my boss and they're, they're you know, showing me stuff. I'm probably more likely to try it. But I think the other aspect of, of listening to you is that the reason why I'm so adamant about principles or, you know, really focusing on, on leading learning in the school, not, not being the sole source of information, not being the sole idea is because a lot of times it actually doesn't help the instructional coaches when yeah. the principal doesn't care. Do you, know yeah. what I, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, that's not really their thing. Yeah. And something, and this is something I've seen forever, you know, um, I'll, I'll see an administrator uh, go up and say, oh, like, you know, we all need to learn, we all need to grow. And like, today is like a, you know, really important day for us to grow. And then the second they're done talking, they'll get on their phone, walk out of the room. Yes. It's like, so, but you, like, you're not doing any of this stuff. Like, I, I'm sure everyone that's listening to this right now knows exactly what I'm talking about. And they're probably picturing like specific people in their careers. Is that oh, fair? I think that is 100% fair. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I really see us as, so we have what we call instructional leadership team meetings. We have a school leadership team, but then we have an instructional leadership team meeting. And that is myself, my assistant principal, um, and my coach. And then we also have a special education coach, periodically REL teachers and our reading specialist will come into that too. And we'll all just kind of talk about what's going on in the building. What are we seeing? Um, and what are some things that teachers are working on? And we kind of have this like group think about like what makes sense for next steps that then goes to our school leadership team, but it's more of like a group dynamic, like right. something that we're all doing and building together. And um, cause I have been involved too much in things where it's just kind of top down and you come to a meeting and it's like, what are we doing today? Okay. Right. And then everybody leaves and you know, you don't know what's going to be happening after that. Yeah. And that, that like, I just think all that, like, cause I think really it's supporting those people that are in those roles yeah. that don't have to do the, the political stuff. Don't have to do the administration stuff that we, we do have to do in those roles, which like, I'm not pretending that doesn't exist. It just really frustrates me. And I know it frustrates a lot of educators when we have administrators who are only focused on the ad ad administrative stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they have lost sight of, you know, what learning looks like and really immersing themselves. Like one of the things that I always try to share is you can't just take risk as an administrator. You have to model taking risks. People have to see you learning, trying new things. They have to see you actually struggling with things and not working and talk about that process because you're asking teachers to do the same thing. And so how do we model that too? Right. Yeah. So kind of building on that, your blog. Yes. You've been blogging. I know that you pretty much blog. I think your post usually comes out on Saturdays. Yes. Like you're pretty consistent with it. 
do you do you actually think your do your teachers read your blog? I'm interested in that. Like, do your teachers on your staff do you think they read your blog? Um, I know that some of them definitely do. They they will come up to me and say something about it. Um, okay. Since I become a principal, I have started talking about things that are happening in their classrooms. I I did when I was an assistant principal too, but I don't know. I, for some reason, I just do it more as a principal because I want right. to shine a light on what's happening in our school and just to speak to like what you were saying. Um, I want people to be able to see what's happening in other classrooms, even if they can't get in there. So, right. um, so it's a nice way to kind of do that. And so, um, so I know that some of them do. Um, the other ones who don't say anything to me, I'm not totally sure. Um, but I, it's like a dirty uh, little I, secret. <laughs> yeah. Like a dirty I little secret. Tell them about it. Um, I send out a newsletter on Fridays, and if it's something that's linked to somebody in the school, uh, you know, I'll post it in there and 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 whatnot. But I'm not totally sure. Yeah, because I think it's a really good space to, you know, obviously share ideas, share learning, but also highlight the amazing things that are happening. And I love uh, when I first became a principal, I remember my former principal, her name was Carolyn Cameron. She said something to me that always resonated. She said, you will actually become so much better of a teacher now that you're a principal if you are willing to continuously go into teacher's classrooms because you get the best PD possible. You get to see other teachers teach. Yeah. What I, what stuck with me though, was I don't really need to be a better teacher because I'm not teaching. What I need is my, my teachers become better teachers. And how does the advantage of being able to see what's going on in other classrooms, how do I utilize that and shine a light, right? And shine a light. And I love that idea of like you using your blog to highlight great things to be able to show other teachers, right? Bring awareness of that. Do you ever, do you ever get the feeling like, mm, I don't know if I want to, highlight this because this is an issue I hear about all the time I don't know if I want to highlight this because it might make someone else feel bad I have totally thought about that yes yeah. um even in like Instagram posts and things like that um and in and, and being like okay well have I talked about this person an awful lot are people going to start thinking that like that's my favorite or or these people are going to feel bad because I haven't said anything about them yet and I've considered it but um I, I, I really do truly see gifts in every single teacher. And I know that at some point I'm going to get to them. Um, and if it's something they're concerned about, I would hope they would come talk to me about it and be like, hey, I noticed you haven't posted blah, blah, blah. Have you known about this, that, and the other thing? And I, right. I, I look at it as an opportunity actually to start a conversation um, instead of worrying about that. Because I think it's way more important to share all the good things. There have been so many conversations I've had with teachers where they're like, hey, I saw that person doing blah, blah, blah. I decided to do it next week. Do you want to come see it? So right. Really and then you highlight them too. Right. Yeah, like I, like totally I, I, I'm personally, I love, like I struggle when I feel like, how come I'm not getting recognition? Right. I struggle with it. And I, I can, I know that personally, I can feel jealous about it too. And then I will get recognition. And I'll be like, I ah, don't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. You know yeah. I mean? like, ah, like, don't even mention it. Right. right. And like, it's almost when I get it that I'm like, Oh no, 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 no. Like, and it like, sincerely, I don't want it except for when I'm not getting it. I'm like, well, how come I'm not getting recognized? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think yeah. that even, you know, like I was thinking about back when um, working with uh, my assistant principal, I liked getting recognition for work that I was doing. And she, she'd be mortified if she was recognized. <laughs> like she would not reckon, she did not want any attention for anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, and I think part of it too is that, you kind of have to weave that too. You don't want to actually say like, oh, this teacher's doing this amazing thing. This is incredible. And they're like, no, 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 I don't actually, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with that. Like there's that too, right? Yeah. I think you have to know like, what are, what are people's preferences? Cause everybody, everybody wants some sort of recognition. Absolutely. In yeah. and other people, it may, it may be just a, a note, right? Like I'm seeing something and I'm going to put a note in your mailbox. Cause I know you're not somebody who's, you know, super public. I've had a couple of my teachers say, Hey, I'm really not comfortable being out on social media and, and, um, just yep. when you grab like snaps of things and whatnot, I'm like, okay, I totally respect that. But, um, if it's something that your kids are doing, that is great. I would hope, you know, you would let me share that piece of it. Right. So. Yeah. And there's, there's actually, so I got something today. Um, I wrote a, I wrote a, a post about, uh, giving kids opportunities to share themselves and yeah. like, you know, sharing physical activity and the, the first and only comment. Uh, on the tweet was kids shouldn't be allowed to do that because this, this, and it'll make some people feel insecure. And I, like, I, I've been thinking about that comment because so do we take away opportunities from some 
not only kids, but some people, mm -hmm. because other people don't feel comfortable with it, right? So yeah. this is one thing I'm adamant about. I think every kid should have the ability to have an online portfolio where they could share their work openly. But I don't believe every kid should be, I don't believe any kid should be able, should be forced to post. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I do. Like, we need to give kids opportunities that make sense to them, but also recognize that some people don't want certain things and that's okay, but we don't take away from all because it, it would be like me saying, well, I want my kid to have this and forcing every parent to actually have the exact same thing, right? Yes, I completely agree. I think that's counterintuitive to saying that kids are all different and they all have different gifts and different talents and saying, I mean, that's basically- In different ways they want to be recognized, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I totally, I totally agree. We, um, we started a social media club for our students this year in fifth grade. And um, we had some parents that didn't want it and, and were concerned that this was gonna be a problem with kids going in and posting things about our school and having access to different social media points because that was not something that they wanted them to access. And so, and then we had other parents who were like, every single kid should be involved in this because they really need to learn how to use social media responsibly. Right. Um, and so, you know, we, we obviously weren't going to make kids who weren't comfortable and didn't want to be posting things about themselves on social media, but we offered it, you know, to the ones who did. And, um, I, it's been a really uh, positive thing in our school. And I, I would be, it would be hard to make decisions that way to just say, um, well, nobody should do it if a certain person doesn't want to do it. Like, it should ever be nobody or everybody. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, I right. think there's a balance to that. Uh, speaking of, you know, some of the stuff that we're seeing online and connecting, obviously, um, so this is recorded and I don't know if this, you know, if we're all going to be outside again, you know, under, out of self-isolation and social distancing. Um, but right now it is March 26th when we're recording this. How have you and your faculty dealt with um, kind of the shift to online learning right now? Because yeah. I, I know your, your kids are not in school, but skill, school is still going on, correct? Correct, yes. Yeah. So um, we are actually technically on spring break this week. Um, yeah. But our E slash home learning is going to be officially starting next week. Now, that being said, um, I had a Zoom hangout with my staff yesterday um, for anybody who was interested. One of my teachers started it. And everybody was kind of sharing what they've been doing. And so some of my teachers have been setting up meetings with their class so that their students can talk to one another um, and just kind of share ideas they have. Um, some of my teachers, actually most of my teachers, um, have been doing seesaw posts where students are responding to one another on there um, and leaving little messages. Um, our whole district actually has access to seesaw and so our teachers use it really quite frequently for kids to reflect and communicate. One of my first grade teachers was telling a hilarious story about a first grader posted a message to her um, and it was actually just really endearing. Um, it was like, hey, um, I really miss you and was just like telling her all sorts of funny <laughs> stuff and it was completely, uh, you know, unprompted. So the kids are really seeking that connection. And so um, my teachers are doing that. Something else that we're offering is every day we post um, videos of them reading stories and those come out at three o'clock every day. So we kind of build community that way. Um, I'm still doing daily announcements and I post those on our Instagram, like all of our social media. Um, and we have kind of like a daily challenge that goes along with that and students can respond and participate if they want to. So it's another way to kind of keep us all connected. Um, another thing we threw out, I don't know if anybody has seen this um, out on social media, but one of my teachers really thinks that we should do this and I love it, of us getting into a caravan and actually driving through the community and waving it yeah, at the kids. Yeah, I saw that it. yesterday actually. We're looking yeah. at organizing that. So, um, so that's, that's some of the things we've been doing. So like uh, listening to you and I think there's a couple things that really stick out to me that are important in kind of what you're doing. First of all, there's a consistency that, that, you know, people are kind of expecting something, and, but you're also creating a routine. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like you, you said, we do this every day at three. So then I know when to actually have this, but also there's flexibility, understanding that not all kids will, will actually go on at three, right? Or they'll, they'll, they'll comment that day or whatever. And I think those are really important things. Like how do we actually create like a consistency where people can count on us, but we have an understanding that there's and flexibility is really important. Like we're, you know, like a, a family with five kids that has access to two devices that, you know, they're not, they're not all going to be able to like go on to a zoom call at the same time. Right. Yeah. I think that, I think the flexibility is, is really important. I think a lot of us went into this thinking, okay, so we're going to start this e-learning and it's going to be kind of like what we did in the classroom only. It's going to be online. Um, and right. then we got home and 
we have families who are also trying to do e-learning and we're mm -hmm. trying to do our jobs and we're trying to just be a family, be a unit um, and figure out what this new normal is for us. And people realize really quickly, okay, so I'm not gonna have this scheduled day, but at this time, everybody in my class is gonna be doing this and then this and then this. Um, and so actually for next week for our e-learning, our teachers um, are sending out a grid um, that our parents can kind of select from. And they send out an email then every day at a certain time, kind of letting everybody know what's going on for the day with some suggestions. But it's really up to the families as far as what they're picking and choosing um, and then submitting to the teachers. But it's, it's very flexible and it's very, um, just very, very based on, on an understanding that we're all kind of learning new things at, at one time. We need consistency, we need connection, but we also need flexibility. Well, okay, so you just said we need consistency, we need connection, but we also need flexibility. Mm -hmm. So what, what will be different? Like, how is that not what we need in the classroom? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no. Like, I, are, 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 I, I think that's a, I think, and this is something I've been really, the, the good practices that are happening now and the stuff that we're focusing on is actually kind of what really matters. And I think that maybe it's a good reminder, you know, and so you and I, before we were talking for about an hour before we even jumped on to the recording, what, what do you hope changes for the better when your, your school goes back, when it's kids every single day? Like what, what do you think this situation will create that will lead to some, like what, do you, what better will come out of this like, or could come out of this? Um, I, I see two, two big things. Um, I, I think the first one is that we realize that we can do a lot less than what we're doing and that our priorities will shift to more of what's essentially important instead of saying, we have to get through all these little tiny things all day, every day, um, and ending up the day all feeling exhausted and not necessarily knowing um, what we've accomplished, um, but it'll help us to prioritize more. Um, and I think the other piece is it's gonna connect home and school a lot better. I have loved seeing the posts of my families posting things that they're doing at home and some of the learning that they've been doing or just the fun things that they've been doing. I feel like it's really connecting us all more as a community, even though we were a very connected school, um, but really building that bond of what's happening in school and what's happening at home. Um, and how can we kind of work together to create that common vision and that, that common good so we're all kind of on the same page? Well, I, I, and I, I love that because I think that, that for me, it was a really light bulb moment listening to you, is that importance of how we build the, com the, the community with our parents more, right? Yeah. And one of the things that I'm really noticing, and I actually, I can't remember, I think I might've saw something that you posted as well, is that a whole bunch of parents are, are doing TikTok with their kid right now their kids right now. Uh, did you yeah. do something with TikTok? Did I see something? Um, we have a TikTok account for Jefferson. Um, it was asked to be paused for a bit, but we were doing um, TikTok. But okay. no, I don't have anything with parents. But but the, the reason why I think that is really interesting right now, because we all know kids are really into it. Like totally. this is a big thing. And I think that like for me, we were you know, a lot of people, I get like, oh, kids like shouldn't be doing this stuff. And, and it's coming from a, a place of not knowing, mm -hmm. not know, like not knowing too much. Right. It's a lot of, well, I saw something on the news, so it's horrible. Right. Right. And so I'm watching all of a sudden a bunch of parents connecting um, face to face with their kids. Like, it's not like they're doing it like across the world they're doing like they're doing dances together like there's actually physical activity but they're also seeing a value that their kid knows something that they don't yeah you know what i mean like they're like the, it's not the parents are are getting their kids on tiktok and teaching them how to do it it's the kids actually saying hey like let's do a tiktok together and like let's make this and let's learn this dance together and it's neat to see those connections happening right now i, I think it's really fascinating um so the last thing I want to ask you, and you might have said this, and maybe you just want to reiterate this, <laughs> okay. is um, what, what is the best advice you'd give to people kind of going through all this stuff right now? Yeah, I, um, I, I think that the, the best advice that I could give, and I'm trying to give it to myself, is think about what are the things that you have to offer um, that bring you joy and how can you take that and share that with other people and use those gifts in this time? Instead of saying, I have to fit inside this box of what I think school is, really thinking about 
how your gifts and your talents are going to impact others and what does it look like in this. Um, and if you don't get everything done that you thought you were going to get in every day, um, and you don't, you know, clean your entire closet and accomplish writing the next novel and all the things you thought you were going to do at this time, but that's okay. And to really to just breathe and just enjoy the space that you're in and each moment is, is truly just the moment that you're in and really be present and not be worrying about all the extra stuff. So, and I think that's re really great advice, but I would say that I'm actually seeing, and I know I'm, I'm really happy you're saying this because I know you're a principal, but I also will tell you that I've actually seen the opposite message. 100%, yes. From, from administrators to teachers, freaking them out. Right. Like, it's just like, you need to get this done. You need to get this done. And I think that even without principals saying it, I think that teachers are feeling that pressure anyway. Like you gotta, you, like you gotta re, like you said this earlier, you gotta recreate school online. So how, how are you as a principal making sure your staff get that message? Like that you're, you're getting. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's so I check in with them. Um, I send them either emails or we are checking in doing like Zoom meetings or Google Hangouts um, and really talking about that as a priority of, you know, what do you need right now? What do you see that your kids need? And, and our teachers really know our kids well. As admin, we have to trust our teachers. They know what the kids need right now more than we probably do because they've been working with them all year mm -hmm. very closely on a daily basis. So the way that I, I'm doing that is I'm giving that consistent message of, just be, just breathe, bring what you can to this. Think about this as, I saw a really great blog post that Katie Martin posted the other day. It's a, a, a retweet of, well, I can't think of who it was. But um, anyway, it was talking about, this is an opportunity to not feel the constraints of all the things that we have to do. This is an opportunity to teach the way that we want to teach because we've never done this before. And so this is an opportunity to to think about education in a different way. So as I'm talking to my teachers, I'm just really encouraging them and reassuring them that, that what they're doing is the right thing. Um, and that as long as they're keeping in touch with kids and they're communicating what's going on, we're in a good place. It's not all about meeting all the standards all the time. Well, there's two things that I'm thinking about as I'm listening to you. First of all, I think it was Amy Fast. I saw a tweet she posted and she said something about administrators, like if you are, and I'm paraphrasing from what I remember, uh, if you're only focusing on the logistics with your staff right now, you're, you are probably doing more harm than good. Yeah, I think I saw that too. But the other thing I want people to think about, and I know this is really important for me is like, I understand teachers know their kids really well, but don't assume that you think kids that would be good are good. Check in on like all your kids to the best of your ability. Because I yeah. think a lot of times we have a perception that, you know, oh, this kid will be fine or this will, you know, but there's, we, do, we might not see some of the struggles that they're having, you know, like some of the kids that are in our schools, their happy place is school. Their happy place is the routine of school every single day. And they might be happy every day when you're there when yeah. they're there and now they're just thrown for a loop and they're struggling, right? Like they might be super type A and this is not a type A experience that's happening right now. I know, I think that, and, and to go along with that, I think also making sure we check in with parents because this is new for parents yep. too. And uh, I, you know, I think parents need to hear that message of, if you're looking at the plan that is written here and you have no idea what it means, <laughs> reach out to me or right. it's okay. You know, it's, it's really, it's, it's not all on you parents. It's not all on your shoulders. We're doing this as a team. Yeah, and I like Christina, I really appreciate that focus on the community and utilizing this time to bring us together for not just right now, but for the future. I think that's really powerful. Uh, Christina, where can people like find you online? Uh, you find your blog, where can we connect with you? Sure, um, so my blog is christinapedraza.com and it's called um, the Oh my gosh, now I'm blanking on the name of my blog. This is terrible. Confessions of an Instructional Confessions Coach. Confessions of a former instructional coach. Former. Anyway, um, yeah. and, then, um, and then on Twitter at Christina Pod. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, we'll make sure that we list that in the description. Uh, you probably see the links as well on the video if you're watching this on YouTube. Christina, thank you for taking the time. I know that even though you're at home and you're in your kitchen right now, it's not that you're not working. You just took Correct. this time. I know you got a million things to be doing. And so thank you for 
taking this time to chat and just kind of encourage educators. And thank you for your, for your leadership in this time because I know that we need very empathetic leaders and I know that that's what you do every day. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate right. being part of this. Thanks. Hey, hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Oh,